Alright, this is Brother Q, and in this episode, we're going to be focusing on something called the Black Codes. The Black Codes. So get yourself comfortable, and we're going to go in on it. Alright, in this day and time, in this political climate, there are certain things going on that affect not just everyone, but melanated peoples especially. And some people seem to think that it is something new that has never been before. But when you go back and you look at the Christian black codes or the black codes of 1865 in Mississippi and how the political regime took the not so long ago freed slaves and made everything that they did a crime or they posted a law against it and there were things that they couldn't do. Now, most people who know about the Black Codes, they go to 1865 and they refer to like states like Mississippi and how they took these Jim Crow laws and things of that nature to make it uncomfortable for melanated peoples in these municipalities. But I'm going to go back today to 1724, and we're going to look at the Christian black codes from that era and bring it up to this present time. I think you'll be quite shocked, and you might be surprised that some of the things that were instituted so long ago still haunt us to this very day. All right, here we go. The Christian black codes of 1724 were initiated during Reconstruction. After the Civil War to control blacks after they were emancipated. Passed by southern states, instead of giving blacks the same rights as white people, the codes limited the blacks' freedom severely. They included that blacks had to be in service of a white person, that they could not have congregations together, that they could not speak out, and that they could not have weapons. Sounds like something in current events. N-F-A-C. Grandmaster J. I'm just saying. They also included that blacks could not go out without a white supervisor. And that blacks had to take on the religions and holidays and gods of their white superiors. These same black codes were said to have been made null and void with the ratification of the 13th Amendment in 1865. Although many southern states adopted black codes to keep former slaves from voting and imposed other restrictions, the 14th and 15th Amendments supposedly had eliminated these codes. But as you'll soon see and study the law of the land in conjunction with religion and politics, you'll discover these codes have been modernized in a disguise and many are still in effect to this very day. Article number one. Article number one decrees the expulsion of the Jews from the colony. Article two. Make it imperative on masters to impart religious instruction to their slaves. Article three. Permits the exercise of the Roman Catholic creed only. Every other mode of worship is prohibited. Article 4. Negroes placed under the direction or supervision of any other person than a Catholic are liable to confiscation. Article 5. Sundays and holy days, which really mean holidays, are to be strictly observed. All Negroes found at work on these days are to be confiscated. Article 6. We forbid our white subjects of both sexes to marry with the blacks under penalty of being fined and subjected to some other arbitrary punishment. We forbid all curates, priests, or missionaries of our secular or regular clergy and even our chaplains in our Navy to sanction such marriages. We also forbid all of our white subjects and even the manumitted or freeborn blacks to live in a state 
of concubinage with slaves. Should there be any issue from this kind of intercourse, it is our will that the person so offending and the master of the slaves should pay each a fine of 300 lira. Should said issue be the result of concubinage of the master, his slave said master shall not only pay the fine, but be deprived of the slave and of the children who shall be adjudged to the hospital of the locality. And said slave shall be forever incapable of being set free. But shall this illicit intercourse have existed between a free black and his slave, when said slave, according to the forms described by the church, said slave shall become free and legitimate, and in such case there shall be no application of the penalties mentioned in the present article. Article 7. The ceremonies and forms prescribed by the ordinance of Blois and by the edict of 1691 for marriage shall be observed both with regard to free persons and slaves. But the consent of the father and mother of the slave is not necessary, that the master shall be the only one required. Article 8. We forbid all curates to process to effect marriages between slaves without the proof of the consent of their master. And we also forbid all masters to force their slaves into marriage against their will. Article 9. Children issued from the marriage of slaves shall follow the conditions of their parents. I'm going to go back and say that again. Children issued from the marriage of slaves shall follow the condition of their parents and shall belong to the master of the wife and not to the husband if the husband and the wife have different masters. Article 10. If the husband be a slave and the wife a free woman, it is our will that their children of whatever sex they be shall share in the condition of their mother and be as free as she, notwithstanding the servitude of their father. And if the father be free and the mother be a slave, then the children shall be slaves. Article 11. Masters shall have their Christian slaves buried in consecrated ground. Article 12. We forbid slaves to carry offensive weapons or heavy sticks under penalty of being whipped and of having said weapons confiscated for the benefit of the persons seizing the same. An exception is made in favor of those slaves who are hunting or are shooting for their masters and who carry with them a written permission to that effect or are designated by some known mark or badge. All right, I'm going to stop for a minute and I'm going to go through that again. These days we hear about regulated, well-regulated militia, Second Amendment, First Amendment, and these kinds of things. Why is it a problem, especially when melanated hands decide to pick up weapons for the purpose of defense, not offense? And what is the resulting behavior of those in power? Let's look at Article 12 again. Article 12. We forbid slaves to carry offensive weapons or heavy sticks under the penalty of being whipped and of having said weapons confiscated for the benefit of the person seizing them. So that means whoever collects them pretty much owns them. An exception is made in favor of those slaves who are hunting or are shooting for their masters. Hunting licenses... Weapons, licenses, background checks, I'm just saying. Who carry with them a written permission to that effect. Or being designated by some known mark or badge. I don't know, security? 
law enforcement in, within the municipalities? Your thoughts. Article 13. We forbid slaves belonging to different masters to gather in crowds. I'll say that again. We forbid slaves belonging to different masters to gather in crowds, either by day or by night, under the pretext of a wedding or for any other cause, either at the dwelling or on the grounds of one of their masters or elsewhere, and less on the highways or in scheduled places under penalty of corporal punishment, which shall not be less than the whip. In case of frequent offenses of this kind, the offender shall be branded with the mark of the floor de lis. Hmm. And should there be aggravating circumstances, capital punishment may be applied at the discretion of the judges. We will command all of our subjects, be they officials or not, to seize offenders, to arrest and conduct them to the prison, although there should be although there should be not judgment against them. I'm going to go back and say that again. We command all of our subjects, be they officials or not, to seize offenders, to arrest and conduct them to prisons, although there should be no judgment against them. I'm going to stop right here. And I want you to take some time to think about what's going on in these municipalities. And I want you to give me your thoughts and your comments on whether or not these very things are still going on to this very day. This is Brother Q, and we will be revisiting these codes. See you soon.